was a lovely summer evening. And in Crosspatch Cottage, Mr. Grumpy was at home. He sat down in an armchair and picked up a book. And then, do you know what he did? He tore the pages out of it. Every one. Mr. Grumpy can't stand books. He has a shocking bad temper. In fact, he's quite the most bad-tempered person you can imagine. Grumpy by name and even more grumpy by nature. The following morning, he was out in his garden pulling up flowers. He couldn't stand pretty flowers growing in his garden. When out of the corner of his eye, he saw a figure. It was Mr. Happy. Good morning, said Mr. Happy. Good, said Mr. Grumpy. What's good about it? But, said Mr. Happy, but nothing, went on Mr. Grumpy. Get out of my garden. I beg your pardon, said Mr. Happy. You heard me, snapped Mr. Grumpy. Go away. I say, laughed Mr. Happy. You're a bad tempered fellow. Oomph, grunted Mr. Grumpy. And, went on Mr. Happy, bad tempered fellows need to change their ways. Rubbish, retorted Mr. Grumpy. And went into his cottage deliberately, stepping on Mr. Happy's foot, he passed him. Bam! Oh, 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 said Mr. Happy. <coughs> Bang! went the door of Crosspatch Cottage as Mr. Grumpy slammed it behind him. Mr. Happy stood there looking not quite so happy as he normally does. His foot hurt. He thought and thought and thought some more. And then she had night hair. He smiled and went to see Mr. Tickle. Mr. Happy told Mr. Tickle of his idea of how to get Mr. Grumpy to change his ways. And Mr. Tickle grinned the sort of grin that he has from ear to ear. The, the, that is if you have ears, which he doesn't. Oh, he grinned, rubbing the hands at the end of those extraordinarily long arms of his together. That sounds fun. That afternoon, Mr. Grumpy went to town shopping. He walked into Percy's shop. Percy, the small engine, was a butcher. Give me some sausages, snapped Mr. Grumpy, and be quick about it. Poor Percy was frightened of Mr. Grumpy, did as he was told. Wasn't going to expect that. <clears throat> but, as he was doing as he was told, and like I said, he wasn't going to inspect that, something appeared through the shop doorway. Do you know what it was? It was an extraordinarily long arm belonging to, well, we can guess it belonged to, can't you? The next ordinarily long arm of Mr. Tickles came in through the door, across the shop, up to Mr. Grumpy, and tickled him. Oh! Screamed Mr. Grumpy in alarm, dropping his sausages. He wasn't going to inspect that, after he'd tailed off Percy, and he looked around to see what had happened. But could he say anything? He could not. Oomph! Grunted Mr. Grumpy. He picked up his sausages, went next door to the cake shop. Crash! Went the door of the shop. Give me a cake! Snapped Mr. Grumpy. And hurry up! Poor Crapus admitted something was frightened of Mr. Grumpy. And, <coughs> sorry, who sold cakes was frightened of Mr. Grumpy. 
protected as she was as she was told. Wasn't going to respect that. But as she was doing she was told, like I said he wasn't going to, going to inspect that. Guess what happened? Oh squeaked Mr Grump here, dropping his cake and his sausages. Oh dear, he wasn't going to inspect that. He just could not understand what was happening. And the same thing happened at Mr. Daly's, and at Mrs. Hartbuck's, and at Mr. and at Mr. Bob's, and at Mr. And at Mr. Packett's, and at Mr. Packett's. It went on all afternoon. And all afternoon, Mr. Grumpy kept being tickled. Shopping. Picking it up and tickle it. Picking it up and tickle it. Shopping. Oh. He wasn't here to, here to inspect that. And he couldn't, just could not understand it. On his way home to Cospatch Cottage, he met Mr. Happy again. Hello, look at Mr. Happy. Having a, having a, having a nice day? Get out of my way, snapped Mr. Grumpy, before I kick you. But, almost before the words had passed his lips, as if Mr. Happy was about to be tailed off from him, that extraordinarily long arm of Mr. Tickles had appeared from behind a tree and tickled him yet again. He jumped in the air and dropped all his shopping yet again and fell over. <coughs> Mr. Happy looked down at Mr. Grumpy lying amid a jumble of sausages and cake and his paper sweet milk and cornflakes and he wasn't telling him off and he was glad he didn't. He wasn't being told off. Poor Mr. Grumpy being tickled. When's all this going to happen? I think he laughed, and if you were to change your ways and not be quite so bad tempered quite so often, this sort of thing might not happen to you quite so often. Oh, grunted Mr. Grumpy. He picked up all his shopping yet again and went home to Crosspatch Cottage. But on his way, he did think about what Mr. Happy had said because he very definitely did not like what had happened to him that afternoon and he was not going to inspect something that was tickling him every time he tailed off somebody. Mr. Happy and Mr. Tickle laughed and shook hands. And so after that, he did try not to be quite so bad tempered quite so often. And the more he tried, the less he found he was tickled. And so he tried more and more. And these days, he's become quite a changed person. Why, only the other evening, he picked up a book. And do you know what? She had the tore out one page. <laughs> The very interesting thing was that he was scared to <laughs> very interesting indeed. Interesting, I guys. My big Christ didn't come up. I had to watch it on something else then. Oh, let's, let's go sip in here. And that's exactly what they are going to do on this very day. I wonder what they'll be making for the show. Well, that's the end of this week's story. Bye-bye.